So my talk today will uh, focus on leveraging livestock to promote a circular food system. What is a circular food system? A circular food system is one that maximizes the use of existing biomass that has already been produced in agriculture to meet uh, human needs. So our food system is inefficient and a very large amount of residue and residual biomass is generated from a farm to fork. For example, to make orange juice, you uh, leave behind 50 to 70% of the fresh orange in the residue. And to make bread flour from wheat, up to 25% of the residue is left at the mill. And also in our supermarkets, 13 to 14% of uh, the fruits and the vegetables end up unsold. Another example is the when you pump gas into your tank and every 10 gallon of gas would contain one gallon of ethanol which means six to seven pounds of uh, corn residues um, are left at the ethanol plant. So all these residual materials are human, indigestible, unpalatable, or undesirable biomass. So let's call it IUUB. These materials are unfit for human consum consumption, but they are still rich in nutrients such as proteins and minerals and micronutrients. For example, the DDDS, that's the residues from a corn after the ethanol uh, making, uh, uh, contains a very high amount of 31.3% of the proteins. And the fat and the protein and the fiber are also con concentrated in the residue to promote a circular food system, we need to find the beneficial use of these materials to uh, serve the society, while at the same time minimizing resource and the climate footprints. Fortunately, livestock animals can help us utilize these materials because they are natural bioprocessors. They have the innate ability to extract the nutrients for production of meat, milk, and eggs. In fact, a lot of uh, food, drink, and fiber, and biofuel processing industry residues are already made into byproducts for animal feeding. In the US alone, we have 11 million tons of male byproducts utilized uh, uh, for animal feeding on an annual basis. And oil seed meals amount to um, 30 million tons. And then ethanol industry, the DDGS, 44 million tons. And the citrus pulp, 7 million tons. These and other materials and byproducts would end up to 90 to 100 million tons a year utilized in the uh, livestock farms for feeding and uh, in production of nutritious food for people. So there are many, many types of food residues produced from our um, uh, food processing system that are used on farms, but not tallied statistically. What I saw uh, some examples. These are these photos I'm going to show you were taken uh, on a dairy farm when I visited. Uh, this was a Chinese dairy farm when I visited last fall. So this is a residue from tofu making and a residue from a tea leaf processing and a tea making. And the garlic skins build from a garlic packaging facility and the cotton seeds after the cotton fiber was removed, and then beets pulp made it into pellet for dairy feed after the sugar extraction. All these materials were blended into the diet for dairy cows on this farm. What our uh, Pennsylvania dairy farmers are doing, this is a recent survey we conducted, and this one farm reported uh, using pumpkins from a local grower. 
The other farm reported using candy meal, probably from a Hershey chocolate factory. And this one using fruits and vegetables mixed or in parts and or in whole fed on their farm. And another farm reported using wedge brewer's grains from a local brewery. And this farm, interestingly, reported using food bank out of date products. So you realize that by feeding these byproducts or food processing residues to dairy cows, we avoid sending some of the materials to landfill or just land spreading. We also reduce the conventional feeds needed on this farm. So this is resource wise and uh, it is climate smart and uh, it's a sustainable way of uh, managing all kinds of biomass produced. There are many other types of IUB materials remain to be valorized and used as resources for feeding. For example, crop residues are produced a larger amount and largely just returned to the soil. A very much larger amount of food wastes are generated at the consumption stage in restaurants and homes. And these materials also need to be valorized instead of sending to the uh, landfills. So what we need are smart, sustainable, and innovative technologies that can help us to convert those materials into safe and nutritious feeds for animals. So I encountered one of uh, the companies making uh, using these type of technologies. The round bills on the photo on the right were what I saw on that same dairy farm was wrapped in the plastic one ton bill. When I asked about it, what's in it? They said it's fermented total mixed ration from a company. So I followed up by visiting that company. This is what I saw inside of the facility. They were making total mixed ration feeds. So the raw material there, basic material, there is a dried wheat straw there. And, uh, and behind it, the greenish stuff there was a fresh rice straw. This was uh, in October. Uh, at, right at the time of rice harvest. And then there is a pile of wet brewer's grains. And of course, they use some other materials like a corn grain, et cetera. And they use computerized ration formulation. So they have a recipe and what type of materials and how much to take to make the total mixed ration. And then this photo with all the round bales there or their products uh, being fermented there, mixed products being fermented there. And their products are marketed into the neighboring provinces, several provinces on dairy farms, some for high producing dairy cows, some for dry cows and uh, for other animal groups. So this is uh, making, utilizing the locally available and on you underutilize the materials to make valuable feed products. So what are we doing at PenVet? And PenVet, our dairy focus group, are doing study on making, developing climate smart and sustain, sustainable dairy feeds. In our area, there are the fresh produce discards from marketplaces. These fresh produce they are discarded. They are fresh, but at the same time, they are also highly perishable and easily uh, easy to spoil. So what we are experimenting in the lab is to make feeds using this material. And the purpose is to preserve the nutritional and feeding value and inhibit the spoilage process. Um, we are also lo using locally available underutilized IUV materials and, and experimentally use uh, dairy feeds. So some preliminary results using the um, fresh produce discards 
and uh, the pH, this is the end, the end product end of our experiment. The pH, the volatile fatty acids, and the desirable fatty acids, as so well as uh, the uh, sanitary conditions of the products are all within the desirable range for feeding. So we are also using computer ration program to formulate recipes utilizing the locally available um, biomass, such as corn stalks, or corn cups, and mushroom stems, that's the discarded after the harvest, and mushroom compost, and brewer grains, and also, of course, the produce discard. So we are experimenting using this material in the lab, and our goal is to make blend feeds for different cow groups to meet their requirements for maintenance, for growth, or, and for production. And these feeds would be used as a supplement or substitute for conventional feeds on farms. So this way, we, we can help farmers to produce food in a way that is resource smart and climate smart and more sustainable. So let me bring home the key message here. Numerous types and a very large amount of crop and food processing, processing residues are generated routinely in our system. And the livestock animals can most effectively utilize these materials for production of meats, milk, and eggs. Opportunities exist for further leveraging livestock to promote a circular food system that is more efficient and resilient and more sustainable. Thank you.